Can you guess which camera dominates the top 10 camera sales for the last two weeks of May? Or which cameras dominate the top three spots? Because, well, we've got some surprises this time around. And we've got some surprises not only in who shows up in the top 10, but who's left out. So stick around after this short break for all the details. But first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter. But most importantly, please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything and really does help this channel grow. Yorubashi is the fourth largest camera retailer in Japan. They report their sales data every two weeks, like clockwork, giving us a glimpse as to what's hot and what's not. While this may not reflect your market, it does give us something to talk about on a lazy Sunday morning. And I'm sure you've already guessed who shows up in the number one spot, and I'm, yeah, yeah, you're right, it's the Nikon Z8. Now this camera's gotta be the most hyped camera going back to, well, July of 2020 when we had the Canon EOS R5, I've never seen any camera get as much attention, as much, well, success in terms of pre-orders. On the day of announcement, through this channel, through my own data, I saw that I had 55 pre-orders of this camera, completely shattering all expectations, completely shattering all previous details. And that live stream that I had that morning, where I had guests come on and talk about what we thought we'd actually get to see in the camera, where we thought if we were the president of Nikon, what would we do? I had 861 peak concurrent viewers. I was not ready for the, the level of expect or the level of attention, the level of, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Just the sheer demand for this camera. And that show, that show ended with Nikon Canada coming on and talking about this camera firsthand. It's truly amazing. The Nikon Z9 to many is like a mini Z9. It's got a stack sensor at under $4,000. It's a truly amazing camera. And speaking of the Nikon Z9, well, it shows up in third place. And this has got to be the first time ever that we've seen Nikon dominate the top three spots. In first place with the Nikon Z8, and in third place with the Nikon Z9. And in second place, we have a Sony, and Sony's done rather well. In second place, they have the Sony a7 IV. No surprises there. And in fourth place, we have the Sony a7 IV, but this is a kit version. Now, keep in mind, when Yodobashi reports their top 10 camera sales, they're doing it by SKU. So if there's multiple SKUs for a given camera, it could show up in multiple places. I know what you're thinking. Yes, so if we add second place and fourth place together, could it not, well, dismount the Nikon Z8 in first place? Potentially it could, but I think with the sheer number of demand or the number of pre-orders, the number of purchases for this camera, it's already started shipping. And here's something really significant about this camera. Despite having something like 55 pre-orders just through this channel alone, every one of those but one shipped on launch day. And that's pretty, or not launch day, but on the day that it's available for shipping, which was, what was it May the 25th or 27th? It was right around then, and I was watching the orders go out, and there was only one that didn't go out, and then a few days later, that camera shipped. So the sheer number of those cameras that went out, I'm, I, I don't think that adding those two SKUs together would have gotten the Sony a7 IV to show up in first place. Nikon's definitely dominating the leaderboard in the second half of May. The only question is, will they continue to dominate it going into June and July? Unlike in our last video, Sony doesn't dominate this time around. They do show up with three cameras, and the other camera is a Sony FX3. In which place was that again? In seventh place. I like the FX3. It's basically a video-centric version of the A7S III. And then, of course, we've got the FX30. We've got the ZV-E1. And now we've got two other cameras coming out that are going to have pretty much the same capabilities as the A7S III. I like the FX series. I really do. For video shooters, you should really consider these cameras over the stills hybrid cameras, but I don't know, when it comes to Sony lately here in 2023 and in 2022, I get a sense that they're coasting a little bit. They're not giving us firmer updates. Um, we need a match. We need to ignite Sony's passion again because I think they're taking a little bit of a nap here and they're coasting. We're seeing Nikon and Canon do incredible things. And yes, my voice is starting to go again. I woke up this morning feeling great. And I still feel great, but now that throat congestion, that, that head congestion is starting to kick off and I'm, I feel a lot better than I sound. I'm, this thing is just slow to get, slow to leave me. I thought I was going to wake up this morning feeling completely fine, 
So please just know that I'm not pushing myself. I am resting and getting plenty of sleep. But now let's get back to that top 10. So we're going to talk about Canon now. We had three Sonys, two Nikons, actually three Nikons. Um, I forgot to mention all the way down there in ninth place, we had another Nikon camera and that's the Nikon ZFC. So Nikon's having a great May. Three cameras in the top 10, two of them in the top three, dominating the top three and of course, having that first place. So Nikon is doing very, very well, at least in Japan at Yodobashi. And I know they're doing well worldwide with the Nikon Z8. But Canon isn't doing too badly either. They got the Canon EOS R50 in sixth place. And I really do like this camera. It's a really good solid camera. I think that it's one of the best entry level cameras out there. Uh, I, I do like Sony ZV-E10. I think both of these two cameras are priced at around the same point, similar capability wise but it's one of those cameras that is not crippled, unlike uh, the recently announced Canon R100. Now this camera really surprised me because if we look at the R50, the R10, the R7, the R8, every camera announced since, and including the R3, it doesn't feel like the Canon cripple hammer has been living in these cameras. Sure, it's missing certain things such as IBIS or not dual card slots or stuff like that, but that's based on the segment of the market the camera's in, not Canon deciding, yeah, let's remove a flippy screen. Let's not give them face detect autofocus. Whereas we look at the R100, it's basically the, well, the M50 Mark II, which is basically just a minor update to the M50, a camera that came out, what, back in 2018 or something like that? Um, the only difference is it's kind of like the M50 without a flippy screen. I mean, to produce a camera today in 2023, that has contrast detect autofocus? Come on, Panasonic doesn't even do that anymore, Canon. I'm, I, I feel surprised by this camera and it's only $200 less. If it was me, if I was looking at Canon and I was thinking, or if I was working for Canon and I thought, hey, let's take a camera and let's see, let's produce a low end model, what would we do? Well, the first thing I would do is I'd get rid of 4K altogether. Instead of embarrassing ourselves by putting out contrast detect, I'd say, okay, let's give it oversampled 1080. Now, 1080 is kind of going the way of the dinosaur, but for the people that are looking at 3.5 frames per second, five frames per second, an entry level camera, having really solid 1080. And if you've got a camera that can produce really good oversampled 1080, uh, sometimes, uh, well, and a lot of times, it can actually look better than 4K video. So 1080, oversampled 1080, up to 120 frames per second. That I think would be pretty impressive. And in terms of stills, none of this 3.5 frames per second, let's give it seven frames per second. So we've got a camera that does well in stills, well in video, we give you a flippy screen, but I'm gonna take away that EVF, I'm gonna give it to you as an option. And you know what? I'm gonna drop the price by another $100. And if you want that EVF, I'm gonna charge you $129. So it's gonna cost you a little bit more than the current R100 with the EVF, but without it, you've got a solid camera, no contrast detect autofocus system. You've got really good 1080 and you've got pretty good stills as well. So it's not going to appeal to the people that want the R50, but for other people looking for an entry level camera that's affordable, well, now you've got a camera around $399 that's going to give you, that's going to make you happy. You're not going to feel like the camera's crippled. I, I just don't understand the R100, but the R50 for $200 more, I think is a very, very good camera, very solid camera. And it's not surprising that that camera is doing well again in the top 10. And the camera announced alongside the R50 was the Canon EOS R8. And it shows up in eighth place with the Canon EOS R6 Mark II showing up in 10th place. So Canon is doing quite well at Yodobashi here in the second half of May with three cameras. Sony with three cameras. Oh, scratch that. I, if, you, if you notice, there's a hole in fifth place here. There's not three Sony cameras. There's four Sony cameras. We have the Sony a7R5, a camera that was announced right around the same time, I think it was just a day before, the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. I like this camera, it's a pretty good camera. I, yes, they've cropped 8K, they're not even giving us, well, 30 frames per second. Uh, the, and yes, it's limited to 10 frames per second, but it is 61 megapixels. It's got its own AI chip. And I, I, I do like the Sony A7R5. I just wish that Sony would finally just get rid of that CF Express Type A card. It's holding things up. You've got a maximum sustained speed of around 650 megabytes per second. Maximum sustained write speed, 
when you're shooting 30 frames per second at 50 megapixels on the Alpha 1, you're not getting lossless RAW. When you're shooting 10 frames per second at 61 megapixels, it, you've got a bottleneck here. There's only so much we can do. With video, 650 megabytes per second allows you to go all the way up to 8K at 60 frames per second RAW. But shooting continuous stills, there's a bit of a bottleneck and, well, they do cost a little bit more. Sony just released a, well, pretty much two terabyte CF Express Type A card for what, $1,400? I think they completely missed what Angel Bird did with the one terabyte for what, $499 or somewhere around that price. Um, I, I, I just, you know, it's great to see that we're having higher capacities here. And I wouldn't be surprised if Angel Bird's got a two terabyte in the mix here, but. You know, you're you're paying a higher price per gigabyte for a Type A than a Type B, but for half the performance. Um, a, a Type B card can give you 1.48 gigabytes per second. That's pretty impressive. The Nikon Z9, which can shoot at 20 frames per second, lossless RAW, my voice is coming back. That's 1.2 gigabytes per second. 20 frames per second, lossless RAW, 45.7 megapixels. Type B is faster. It's cheaper. It's better in every way unless of course you're talking about size they are a little bit bigger and I, I don't know if you're looking at purchasing the alpha one or one of those other top end cameras like the a9 mark three uh, sorry sorry the a9 three you don't call them marks in the sony world would you mind if those bodies were just a little bit bigger and had a type b card or maybe even a firmer update there are some frustrating things I'm finding with Sony right now. They seem to be coasting. They're stubborn with that Type A card. And while everybody, including Canon, I mean, look, the, 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 <laughs> the R5, what are we up to? Something like 11 firmware updates since this camera came out. Almost a firmware update every 90 days. Um, it's, or less than that, every 60 days. The, the, the R5 is amazing how many firmware updates it's getting. Nikon providing firmware updates for their cameras. Sony seems to be the only company that doesn't believe in offering firmware updates for their cameras and is stuck in Type A. So let's give Sony a bit of a push. Let's put some pressure on them. We want Type B cards for our high-end cameras. Okay, put it in the low-end cameras, the Type A cards, but the high-end cameras, there's no reason why we shouldn't have Type B cards. So to sum things up here, we've got three Nikon cameras in the top 10. They're absolutely dominating the top three that pole position with the Nikon Z8, the Nikon Z9 in third place, and of course the Nikon ZF ZFC down in ninth place. We've got four Sony cameras, two of them are the a7 IV, and we've got three Canon cameras. But what we're missing here is the Panasonic S5 Mark II. It hasn't been in the top 10 for some time, and I'm really surprised. I like this camera. I like what Lumix has done. I like what Panasonic Lumix has done by finally giving us a face detect autofocus system. And I do think that the camera's selling well. It's probably in 11th place, just tucked in there. I, I'm pretty impressed with what they've done. And with the Mark II X recently started shipping, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Panasonic's gonna do in the future with the refresh of the S series, the S1H and the S1, the Mark IIs. Now, will we get an S1R Mark II? I don't know. We're definitely within that time frame where a refresh is expected. We're in June now. So I definitely think within the eight, next eight months, but I think we're looking at the fall now because quite often we don't get a lot of summer announcements. A lot of people are on vacation. There's not as much notice or attention paid. So if we are getting the S1H Mark II this year, I think it's gonna be September, October. I'm really looking forward to that camera when it comes out, especially with their new face detect autofocus system, but no Fuji and no Pentex and no Kodak. But no, Fuji, that's a little bit surprising, isn't it? No XH, no XH2 or XT5. Yeah, well, and keep in mind, this is a localized market. This is Yodobashi. They are the fourth largest retailer and camera retailer in Japan. Uh, but they're not, when it comes to the rest of the world, outside of Japan, they don't have a market. I would, I've been talking to my friends at B&H and try to pressure them to say, hey, look, can you guys release your sales data every month or so? And they said, well, we do it once in a while. I'm trying to reach out to Adorama and do the same thing. Get them to release on a regular basis sales data. Wouldn't that be nice, guys? So we could actually find out what's going on in North America and what's going out in Europe. And if you work for a retailer, a major retailer, somewhere in Europe or North America, and you would like to get your sales data out there, we would definitely like to have it. Maybe you're in Canada. 
Australia, New Zealand, because we'd like to get another perspective. See, this is Sunday morning. It is not about providing you with necessarily the best, the greatest news out there. It's a slow time. We've had a few slow days. Wake up in the morning and, hey, look, we've got some camera news, something to talk about. Does it impact your life? No, it, and it really shouldn't. But it's something interesting. It's like following sports. Some of us do it because we love the team. Some of us do it because of the betting action. Some of us do it just because it's something to do. And that's why I like covering Yodobashi in the top 10 camera sales, because like clockwork, every two weeks, they release their sales data. And it gives me something to talk about on an early Sunday morning. I do want to talk a little bit just briefly about all of you worried about me and my health. Yes, I do have, I can't, I can talk about it in the comments, but I can't mention it in the video because it gets demonetized. But I've been sick for about a week now. As you can tell by my voice, I'm still not completely out of the woods, but I'm feeling a whole lot better. I would say probably by Wednesday, I'll be as right as rain. I'll be feeling 100%. I hope later today I'm feeling 100% too. I believe this is just the head congestion draining. I'm, I'm tired of being sick and I've got somewhere to be the, on the following weekend. So I hope I'm better by then. So don't worry, I am getting all the rest and relaxation. I'm drinking soup and fluids. My wife is making sure I do that. So I'm keeping myself as right as rain, but this is a new week. We've got some really exciting news coming out. We're gonna have specifications on the Canon EOS R1 not a whole heap and load of them, not like 12 specs, but we're going to get at least four or five of them. And we're going to get specs on the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, an update on that camera. So I'm really excited. I'm ready to go. Will it show up Monday morning, early Monday morning? Perhaps. What about Tuesday morning? Well, I think that's a good chance too. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we get the R5 Mark II on one day and the R1 on another day, giving us an opportunity to get excited more than one day in the week. After all, we got five work days. And um, we've got two big pieces of news coming out for Canon, so I'm really looking forward to that. And if you want to stay up to date on all, the latest on all the latest camera news and rumors, I'm starting to mumble my words as well. Don't forget to subscribe and choose all notifications. And if you've been a member for a long time, but you haven't, you haven't subscribed for some reason, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. It really does help this channel grow. I'm hoping to get 50,000 subscribers before year end. So go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. But if for all the minor news and rumors, um, or really incredible pricing deals. Now, it's rare that I put out a video like I did just a few days ago about the best deals coming out on Canon, like the R6 Mark II for $1,599. Watch this video here if you want to find out. I've got the links in that video as well. The R5 for basically $3,000 with a free battery grip and the EF to RF adapter, a whole bunch of lenses on sale, some of them $700 off. And yes, that's on an L series lens. Then definitely watch this video here. But most of the times, those types of announcements, they're not really big enough to have their own separate video. So go ahead and follow me on Twitter because I usually tweet those out. And I'm always looking for really good deals and we'll tweet those out. Sometimes they're only on for a day, sometimes a week. And sometimes with Canon cameras, we've been having rotating sales since Black Friday. The Canon EOS R5 has never been less than $200 off. It's pretty impressive, right? $200 off. And that's in the United States. In Canada, we're seeing a lot of sales on Canon goods too, not nearly as good as the US. And in the UK, yeah, I understand you're not seeing sales. Those are the prices you're expected to pay. But apparently I hear there's a burgeoning gray market out there. And for anybody looking at purchasing through the gray market, I do caution you. Um, quite often that means you don't get any warranty support. So be careful with that too. And for anybody using my affiliate links down below to help support this channel, um, if you're from the United States, that's great. If you're not, you wanna make sure that the products you're purchasing that are gonna be supported. If you're buying Angelbird, they don't care. They, it's worldwide. So they provide the support out of their Austrian office. So you're covered either way, but certain things like cameras or lenses or tripods, even like Manfrotto, if you get it shipped out of the US, to the UK, to Germany, your warranty isn't valid because it's supported by the US and the US won't support out of country. So I want you to keep in mind there are certain risks with buying gray market. But that's it for now. We've got a really exciting week planned. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your concern. We'll see you again soon.